So FS.com or Fizz or Fs or however you want to pronounce it. I mean, just FS.com and go check out their stuff. They sent us this 24-port. Can't, can't, can't your stuff. I, can't you see I'm making a video here? I don't care. This is a, not a switch. This is a switch. These are all switches, and I, I guess that is a switch, too. But, but this is the best out of all of this on the table, and it's cool and stuff. <laughs> I I guess I can't argue with you there. So um, maybe we'll review that in a different time. We're going to check out this 24-port PoE Wi-Fi splitter box or whatever you called it. It's a Wi-Fi box. We'll teach you what it really is later, okay? So this is my first really time of being able to physically check out one of the FS.com switches. And then I guess probably it's just going to be FS. But this one, of course, all prices are subject to change, especially still, I mean, the fluctuation of all the things. So do keep that in mind. Always go shop your current prices based on demand. And that switches are definitely have a big demand lately, it seems. Now, I'll just jump straight out. I mean, if you haven't seen the short I did of the Switch with all the 24 ports connected, you know, you can probably check that out down below. Decent little short showing I was showing all the PoE switches and ports hooked to it or whatever. But the one thing I didn't like is the damn fans. This is a loud Switch, so keep that in mind. If you don't do any of the fan mod stuff, you don't want to avoid your warranty, the fans are full out all the time. I did ask the manufacturer, hey, is there some way to turn them down or is whatever? And well, basically they said, no, that's a feature to keep it cool. Well, no shit. But that's a whole different thing. Switches should adjust their fan rates. This isn't new technology to do PWM fans. I don't know why. At this price point, you should include it. So enough about the fans. Yeah, I'm still going to talk about the fans probably later. I won't stop and go on about the specs and all the switches, but I believe it's a 370 watts because there's a 400 watt power supply, but then they do allow a 30 watt deal for the processor and whatnot. That was pretty awesome that even at pure idle and nothing really going on the switch had some stupid low wattage as you can see here i did like that they had the, the actually there's eight ports over here now this is just the console port that if you lock yourself out which i have done that but the four ports over here are not poe but those are only gigabit so if you did want to do some dac cables over here or you can go ahead and do that it would save you the cost of, you know, I guess doing DAC cables, even though they are kind of cheap, it would save you the cost of SFP modules. But well, I, I guess in some case you'd want to do that. But so you do get the full 24 ports versus like some switches will call themselves, you know, a five port switch. Well, you still need to uplink it with one port. So you really only get four other devices in it. Well, that's not the case with this. Now, all the lights are off to the side. You can see some people may like that. Some people might not like that because I know sometimes wires in the way, you know, makes it hard to see all the different activity lights and you can just see them at a glance over here. So to kind of pick your poison on that. So if you're not already aware, this switch is a, with a, a managed switch, meaning that it has a whole web interface. It has a CLI, a command line interface all the things for it because yeah you can do all the cool different vlans and everything which if you have poe cameras 
I highly suggest that you put them on their own VLAN and don't allow internet access to them because we hear it all the time. I have different security articles that, hey, camera XYZ had a vulnerability and got hacked, et cetera. Well, who cares if you have it blocked and you have them on their own little subset VLAN over here, and then you can just let them eat and do their thing and, and not have them traverse the internet unless maybe you're doing through a VPN. I have been looking for another 24 port switch and I did look at FS.com and I don't know if they somehow have some way of being able to see that I was and then contacted me about sending me this one for review and then we went back and forth. But I, I, there was a couple ones I did look at and of course, yep, everybody's going to say, well, why don't you just go Unify? To really get a decent PoE, you know, power total to run some decent cameras and not have to worry about you know running into limitations you're going to have to get into this you know at least 250 300 watts for 24 ports but that's one around 700 dollars right now on the whole unify side so they do have a smaller switch the it looks like it's 379 right now and but it has only 16 ports PoE at only 95 watts. And it's the one I found in stock was at Streakwave. And before, a couple months ago, when I was looking for stuff as well, I couldn't find this switch anywhere. So it's 24 port Ethernet and then four SFP+. Plus. So there we go. You can see that definitely starts to change things. And the wattage... So wow, 500 watt power supply. So you can really start to see some of the things I'm wanting to shop around for. If there's other differences there, I really should start to look for. I mean, do let me know. I mean, I'm not the smartest when it comes to switches. I don't use all the different functions and routing and everything. Really, I'm just that kind of that power home user of doing several different VLANs on a switch. So that lands us back to I would say that micro tick or micro tick, however you pronounce it, is going to be right in the same price realm as, as the FS, but brings those additional ports, that SFP plus ports to the table. And according to a review, and they did a very good review, is served the home. Talk about how the fan spun up and then the switch fell silent for about a minute. So at low loads, you're gonna get lower fan speeds. Maybe FS should put that in their switch as well. And now the other thing they did show at idle power is 25 watts. So it's a little bit more on the idle power there than the FS, but hey, you do get those SFP plus, you know, get those 10 gigabit uplinks for all the things. So it's fairly easy to use. The only, I find that some stuff is kind of buried in here. Um, I do have this zoomed in, so it may look a little funky. Um, I was, maybe I'll zoom it out to 110%. Sorry, mobile users. The like, say for instance, I want to go look at like what is the I can see right here. It's 100 megabit. It's just camera plugged into it. But I want to go look at how much power is it pulling, and. Like, so that should be really, I think, on the interface, but then you have to come dig off and find it, I think, like in the port config. And then you could find the port. There's the 370 watts. Um, interface list, power. And then, then you could find it over here and it have 4,100 milliwatts. And, but then another thing I couldn't find that was easy to do was just to reboot a port. I know a lot of other switches have that, but I think the only way I could find to do this was to turn the port off and then save it and then turn the port back on. They really need a function to clean up some of this, which is, this is all software and they could fix this fairly easy and make it simple for a user because, you know, face it, they're probably doing the power home user that would want to do a simple GUI. Now, I do like that the GUI actually is on the switch itself and not on some stupid controller. But I guess with that comes some limitations of the way the design is. Now, one thing I did think was pretty cool versus I've seen some others 
is you could do this VLAN batch. So if you're like trying to apply like say ports one through 16, very simply, you know, go over to one VLAN, you know, say for your camera VLAN, they have this cool little batch config and you can just go throw it in here and you could say, hey, I wanna do ports one through 16 and I wanna add them to that VLAN. And then you hit apply, boom, jump straight over. I definitely do like that they have that ability. And then, of course, you can come in here and you can edit them manually if you like as well. And the big key is they use regular network terminology and not the ones that Ubiquity just made up, which was a breath of fresh air playing with this switch. So in closing, would I go with a switch like this? I mean... The number of problems I had with it was just how loud it was. And I really kind of consider this to be like a pro home style switch or, you know, small office type. And they really should have those PWM fins that, that slow down, you know, basically whenever it doesn't, you know, have a big load on, it's not very hot. I mean, plenty of other switches have that as well. Even some of the cheaper ones that this one's pretty much almost quiet as you saw in the previous part of the video. The other thing I didn't really like in this price point of it was there was no SFP port. So you're only gonna get those one gig uplinks on here and I guess you could probably aggregate those in some way if your other switch support those. But given that there's some other switches in this kind of same category that you can get some 10 gigabit links out of the uplink ports on them, then I would probably stick with that particular model and not something with these. Now, one thing, I guess these have the RJ45s built into them. So then again, you would not have to buy any SFP modules, but that cables are pretty cheap as well. So definitely when you're checking out some switches and stuff, just kind of look at the price points and really the big thing right now still today is, is it in stock? Because there were some other switches I was checking out that they just simply weren't in stock. So there was no option and well, this one was. So do your shopping. And if you have some other different models that you'd like to check out and things and definitely shoot us a comment down below. I'd like to see what other switches are available out there. And y'all know the drill. Press all the buttons and y'all take care. That was, you left me hanging, bro. Oh, there we go. <laughs> My hand hurts. <laughs>